Hello, Taman Tamanku. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Johnny. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, we've been doing so many videos about Indonesian music. And um, it dawned on me the other day, I don't know anything about the culture or the people or the country. All I know about is the music. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be exploring Geography Now Indonesia. Now, this actually comes from the channel Geography Now, and I've got a link to their channel in this video that we're watching, which is just Geography Now Indonesia, uh, as you would expect. <laughs> uh, I have that in the description down below. Make sure you go give them a uh, subscription, thumbs up, give the original video of you, comments, do, uh, go do all the good stuff. And when you're done, if you wanna subscribe to me, it would be much appreciated. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this rocking. Um, it is about time that we learn about the great country of Indonesia. Here we go. Hey everybody, so if you don't know anything about Indonesia, basically all you have to know is that it's kind of like the Hawaii of the Muslim world, but it's like huge. <laughs> it's like the biggest state and with orangutans. And that's it, just no punchline. Oh, that's it? <laughs> it's time to learn geography now. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. So as some of you know, I've been to Indonesia one time on one island for like three hours. I ate one dish. So basically I'm like the Indonesia expert. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, if not, I'm kind of like the only guy on YouTube doing full profile videos like this. So for now, you'll just have to kind of deal with me for like the next 12 or so minutes. Woohoo! Default. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jesus. Again, if you don't know anything about Indonesia, it's basically like if the Middle East and South Asia had an incredibly colorful, loud, somewhat explosive set of babies, like thousands of them. Okay, that doesn't really help. First of all, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago nation located right where the Indian Ocean meets the Pacific Ocean on the incredibly okay. clustered set of islands making six countries known commonly as Nusantara or the Malay Archipelago. Indonesian Archipelago. Wait, what? Hang on, wait, what, what, what? what? Commonly as Nusantara or the Malay Nusantara Malay Archipelago Malay Archipelago so uh, we did um if I'm not mistaken I think we did um I forget what we did but we explored a country that was within this region and I've never heard of that Nusantara is that is that a regular thing is that actually something that they call it or Malay Ar Archipelago jeez uh, uh, off the bat I'm already like learning stuff I never knew before I love it Indonesian archipelago. Sure, whatever makes you happy. Indonesia actually has land for Are they actually interchangeable? East Timor, Papua New Guinea, and Malaysia on the biggest island, Borneo or Kalimantan, which is one of the world's Kalimantan. triple split nation islands, the other one being Cyprus. Although technically, if you include the UN buffer zone, it's kind of like four entities, but the UN isn't a country. Whatever, just watch the Cyprus episode. Mm. The country is divided into 34 provinces, five of which have special statuses, with the capital and most populous city, Jakarta, located on Java, the world's most populous island with nearly half of the entire population of Indonesia. In it, the largest cities after Jakarta are Surabaya and Bandung, both located on Java. Oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. We have something like that in Dallas. We have a very similar. I live in Dallas, Texas. Um, we have a bridge that kind kind of sort of looks like this, not exactly, but it's a suspension bridge, kind of like that, um, and it's all white. Um, it's kind of sort of similar. Uh, so immediately, I thought of that. Island and Medan, <laughs> located on Sumatra, Jakarta, Soekarno, Hatta International, Bali's Mura Rai International in Despa. Woo! Look at that. That's an airport. Look at that. Perfectly manicured, sitting in the ocean. Jeez. Pansar and Surabaya's Juanda International. Now, here's where things get a little speculative. Today, there are still arguments claimed as to exactly how many islands Indonesia has. The National Coordinating Agency for Surveying and Mapping says Indonesia has about 13,500. The National Institute of Aeronautics and Space Agency says that it has about 18,300. Whereas the Indonesian government claims about 17,500. But wherever the point is, that there's is, a lot of them. Over that is so many. What? That is so many freaking islands. It says 8,800 are named. So were the other ones just like privately owned or just like, um, what do they call them? Like, I don't want to say national park, but maybe something like that. Just like owned by the government or by the country themselves. If you know the answer, let me know below. Or I guess maybe he's going to tell us. 8,800 have names and over 900 of them are permanently inhabited. You would think they are the country with the most islands, but surprisingly, Finland and Canada beat them. Wow. A lot of their islands are kind of like little islands in the lakes. So does it really? Oh. Uh... I guess. Now 
let's talk about the five special administrative provinces. Interesting. They are Aceh, Yogyakarta, West Papua, and Papua, and the capital Jakarta. Now, no surprise, the capital Jakarta acts as its own. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Do that. But what about the others? First, Aceh. Aceh is kind of like the black sheep of Indonesia. It's the only province in which Sharia law is fully implemented. Also, they really? kind of have like a ton of oil, so yeah, they've kind of asserted a very independent ideology that sets them apart as autonomous from the rest of Indonesia. Then you have Yogyakarta, which is the only region that Whoa. is still governed by a pre-colonial monarchy. The Sultan of Yogyakarta, who acts as a hereditary governor. Otherwise, we get the two Papuas, which collectively used to be the province called Irian Jaya. And it's just like cut down the middle, I guess. I guess it's just uh, cut down the middle. That's interesting. I know you said like it was one of the only islands that are like separated as far as province goes, but that's interesting as far as the delineation of... <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. The delineation of this line over here. But then in 2003, they got split into two. Basically, this is the place that has the least in common with the rest of Indonesia. It has a culture and background closer to their cousins across the border in Papua New Guinea. So then why is this part of Indonesia? Well, long story short, Indonesia was basically like, well, now that we have our full sovereignty, we get everything that the Dutch colonized. <laughs> people of Papua were not too happy. So then Indonesia was like, all right, we'll give you a vote to stay or leave. However, we would strongly implore you to make the right decision. <laughs> so they voted to stay in. A lot of people complained. There's still some current opposition. And to this day, the area has a relatively high level of autonomy. And the government kind of just leaves them alone, except for when it comes to mining for resources. Oh, and the South Maluku area also kind of... Oh, uh, hold on. They leave them alone, except when they need resources. So they're... What? I mean, they're basically just exploiting them, right? Right? What do you think? Let me know. Comment down below. Do you think they're exploiting them? That's, it sounds like they are. It sounds like they are. But... I mean, I'm I'm an American, and I'm I'm just now learning about all this. Kind of has like an independence dispute thing kind of going on, but the major opponents to the Indonesian government are primarily based in the Netherlands. Then you have the strange Riau Islands, which look like they should belong to Malaysia, but they don't, even though they have a strong Malay-derived culture. Then you have the Ambalat Sea Block, which has a ton of oil that both they and Malaysia argue over. So that essentially covers most of the hmm. administrative divisions of Indonesia. Some of the most notable spots of interest in Indonesia might include the National Monument and Museum, Royal Keraton Nayo. Whoa, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Is that an ancient, uh, like an ancient building or Royal, uh, Royal, Royal, Jesus. I'm going to try to say it before he says it. Royal Caraton, uh, Nya Gakarta Palace. Yogyakarta Palace. Ratu Did I get it right? Did I get it right? <laughs> the National Monument and Museum. Royal Keraton Nya Yogyakarta Palace. Yo! <laughs> yeah, I got it right. Yo, I'm moving to Indonesia. Let's go. Ratu Boko, the Magalang and chicken shaped churches, Borobudur. Wow. Wow, look at that. This might, I mean, there's obviously some HDR and some really high contrast here. But that is gorgeous. Wow. For you to be the largest Buddhist temple in the world. Wow. The Palace, the Taman Sari Underground Mosque, the Equator Monument, wow. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan Lake Temples. Yeah, I try to say that five times fast. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan. Okay, he's right. It's a little bit. It's a little bit hard. Baton Lake, no, no. The Millennium Bridge, the Sacred Monkey Temple, the Hellmouth or Elephant Cave, the Seven Story Pagoda wow. of Cebu, the Smoked Mummy Villages of. Oh, what? Wait, what? What is this? Smoke mummy villages of uh, Aikim and uh, Jiwaka? Aikim and Jiwika in pa Jiwika. Papua. Or if you're lazy, you can just go to the Taman Mini Indonesia Inda Park, which kind of has like a bunch of replicas of all the famed sites in Indonesia. On mind, there's Dutch <laughs> colonial cool. style buildings all over, too many ancient temples and pagodas to list. But no matter how many buildings and landmarks are built, they will never compare to what Mother Nature has done. Which brings us to... Physical it's geography, here we go. Like that one ex we all had back in our 20s that we trusted a stupid friend to hook us up with. Super attractive, but almost killed you a few times. Indonesia lies on what is labeled as the prehistoric continental shelf known as Sundaland, which during the Ice Age times pretty much connected all of the islands together before the Wallace Line until the ice melted and filled in the gaps. Now this is where things get incredibly messed up. Not okay. only is Indonesia right in the worst part of the Ring of Fire, but the country is basically smashed between three converging major continental Whoa. plates. The Eurasian, the Pacific, and the Australian plates, with Dozens of minor plates and rifts like the Sunda, Timor, Banda, Moluka, and so on. This, in return, gives Indonesia over 400 volcanoes, disputably more than any in the world, with over 150 active ones. The most volcanically active country in the world as well. Wow, that is so many volcanoes. So I wonder, I wonder, are there other, like, um, I, what do they call them, like magma rifts? I wonder if there's still, if there's still like new volcanoes and new islands being formed. Now, that has to make sense, right? With all these tectonic plates coming together. Like, I wonder if that's why they have so many islands and, right? Doesn't that make sense? I wonder. 
Let me know. Comment down below if you know. This means on a daily basis, Indonesia experiences on average about four earthquakes a day, ranging anywhere between the small, timid three to a noticeable six on the Richter scale. And you never know where or when they will happen. That is actually crazy, dude. I've never experienced an earthquake. I can't imagine doing what? What do you say? Three to six a day? Damn. Hmm. Impressive. Nonetheless, volcanoes can be a good thing, especially when concentrated close to the equator as the warmer, humid climate allows moisture and minerals to coalesce, creating some of the most fertile land on the planet. This is why places like Hawaii and Iceland are so radically different despite both being volcanic islands. In the end, Indonesia got blessed with a flourishing abundance of flora and fauna, the second That's highest so concentration gorgeous. in the world after Brazil, many of which being endemic species like the Raflesia arnoldi and the Titan arum, the largest flowers in the world wow. which each smell like rotting corpses. <laughs> <laughs> oh yo oh man can you imagine that dude oh, okay hey you get all these different ones and by the way it's gonna smell like shit and at over 180 they also have the highest concentration of mammals out of anywhere in the world nonetheless the national animal is actually a reptile the largest in the world Ooh. at three meters long the, the komodo dragon oh damn i was gonna say it right before the thing popped up dang the famous komodo dragon which you can find a bunch of on komodo island which is where they get their name from and they can kill people just a heads up. And the surprisingly not national animal, even though everybody knows and loves them, the only great ape in Asia, orangutans, are only found on this archipelago as well. Really? By the way, they look docile and really? quiet, but orangutans can rip off your arm if you anger them. So don't. Otherwise, the largest <laughs> mountain, Kungkak Jaya, is located in the east in Papua. The longest river, the Kapuas, flows on Kalibantan, or Borneo Island, starting in the east, emptying into the South China Sea. The largest lake, as well as the largest volcanic lake in the world, Lake Toba, can be Whoa. found on Sumatra. This is also the site of the largest speculated volcanic explosive eruption on Earth that essentially created a worldwide volcanic winter. The eruption was Whoa. so big that you can literally observe ashes from the explosion that went as far as Malawi in East Africa. Remember, guys, Mother Nature is beautiful, but if she wants, she can kill you close to punkak jai is wow. Glassberg, the largest gold and copper mine in the world and on mount ejen on java which spews out blue lava all over you can find That's so cool sulfur miners that literally go into the base of the volcanic craters risking health just to get raw sulfur ores otherwise you have other anomalies like the sidorajo mud volcanoes the three colored lake kelimutu in flores and the kakaban island jellyfish lake too many strange places dude like i just have to say so i mean i've experienced i've gone to a few different places in the world but I've primarily been in America, primarily been in Texas. And this stuff looks so alien to me, but it looks like the appeal of it is indescribable. It is, it is like a call of the void. Like all this stuff that he's showing me that I'm seeing for the first time ever, pretty much like I've seen a Komodo dragon like in pictures and I've seen pictures of orangutans, right? But all this stuff just looks like, it looks like something that I would never be able to see it's it's a, it's a flight away. I can hop on a plane and go see that. I could be there tomorrow, right? Obviously, I'm not going to do that because um, I'm sure it'd be like ten thousand dollars to fly tomorrow, um, which <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, I also can't do that. Um, but anyway, um, it's like it, it looks so strange. It looks like such a far world away, but it's really not. And to know and to realize that all this stuff is here on the same planet, and we're all here on that same planet together, like it it is such. I mean. Being able to experience all these cultures, even though it's vicariously like through this video, it is so humbling. It is so, so freaking humbling. Like I'm, I'm so happy I started doing this. This is such a gorgeous country. To this day, Indonesia is the number one producer of palm oil, cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, coconut, and vanilla. Some national dishes might those. include things like rendang, satay, or satay, satay. <laughs> papeda, ikan bakar, pempek, tumpeng, lemang, and the national dish nasi goreng, which basically just means fried rice, which has no exact recipe. You can mix it up and kind of do what you want to it. Oh, and keep Ooh. in mind, Malaysia might argue that some of these dishes belong to them but that's a whole other story tied in with history and culture yeah we got time why not talk about it <laughs> there we go now there's a lot of curious mysteries when it comes to indonesia's people like how did they become predominantly muslim or what's the whole deal with them in malaysia or wait this guy is considered an indonesian what first of all the country has about 260 million people making it the fourth most populous country in the world with the largest wow. population of muslims as well now here's the thing in a sense yes 95 percent of the population is considered native indonesian but that's an incredibly broad term considering that indonesia has about 300 different ethno-linguistic groups split up across all the island regions of the country if you look oh, at a map true with the actual true true group break down it kind of looks something like this ho 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 oh my lord you know they talk about how oh america is the melting pot uh, 
What the hell are you doing? Look at this. Look at all of these different ethnic groups. Holy shit. My Lord. Actually impressive. Actually mind blowing. Nonetheless, the two largest parent ethnic groups are the Javanese that make up about 40%, the Sundanese that make up about 15%. Otherwise, the rest of the population is primarily made up of smaller groups and tribes that have only around 2 to 3% each, like the Batak, the Sulawesi, the Balinese, Minangkabau, Betawi, Papuan, Dayak, and so on. Finally, about 5% are non indigenous Indonesians like Chinese, Arabs, Indians, and even a few Europeans. They also use well, the Indonesian expats. rupiah as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. And here's where things get a little Little confusing culture and language the one thing that kind of unites all indonesians is that they share the national language bahasa indonesia bahasa which indonesia the indonesian language however bahasa <laughs> indonesia is actually kind of like a lingua franca to many of the people as indonesia is the world's largest trilingual country in addition to bahasa indonesia most people speak their own mother tongue as well as english yep interesting english. they caught on quick when they realized it was the money language the funny thing is even the money language like I get it, and I've heard things like, oh, you know, it's about the almighty dollar and this and that. But, I mean, I get it. I guess it is kind of an international language, right? Like Pretty much a large majority of Europeans can speak English. I get it. I get it. But I, it's, it's hard to describe this because my first language actually wasn't English. My parents aren't from America, right? And so even though I was born and raised here, it's just like, dude, like, I don't know. It feels kind of, it feels kind of scummy sometimes that everybody has to speak like English, right? I want to say our language, but I can't really say that because I don't know, man, like it just feels weird. It just feels weird sometimes how like sometimes people are forced to speak this language instead of me learning the other language, right? I can speak a few different languages a little bit, right? Um, I can speak Farsi. I can speak, you know, a little bit of some other, th other stuff, but it just seems unfair at times, right? Like if you look at it objectively, it seems kind of unfair. Everybody has to speak English, but I don't have to learn, you know, Bahasa Indonesia. Hello, Taman Tamanku. That's all I know. I'm sorry. I'll learn more. I promise. I promise I'll learn more. Even though the Javanese make up the largest people group, <laughs> the Javanese promise. language is not an official language. Technically, it could have been, but then that would have favored one people group over all the others, which would have caused tension. So they kind of had to choose like a neutral default. Plus, Javanese is like really hard to learn, and the original writing system, although very beautiful, is incredibly Ooh. difficult to write. Nonetheless, at nearly 100 million speakers, this makes Javanese the largest non-official minority language in the world. And that's why the Bahasa Indonesia language is so strange. It's not even technically indigenous to Indonesia, but more Malay derived. To this day, people who speak Bahasa Indonesia can understand Malay. Salamat pagi. Salamat pagi. Namasaya Johnny. I know that. So you guys see, I'm trying. I'm trying. Stands somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of what their neighbors are saying in Malaysia. The biggest difference, though, would be the loan words, as Indonesia took quite a bit of influence from the Dutch back in colonial times. For example, kantor versus kantor, doctor versus doctor, mantel, mantel, oma. Opa, Vorto, Wartel. Speaking of the Dutch, quick history lesson. Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic kingdoms, oh. the Portuguese come in quickly, but then the Dutch flock in. Japan comes in for a hold, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What what is he talking about? Is this history he said? Hold on. I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about never mind. I have to rewind it. I'm sorry. Oma, Opa, Vorto, Wartel. Speaking of the Dutch, quick history lesson. Yeah, that's right, history lesson. Hindu kingdoms. Holy crap. So this is a palace? Like a Hindi palace? Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist. Buddhist kingdoms. We saw this, right? This is the biggest uh, Buddhist temple Buddhist in the world. Kingdoms, Islamic. Wow. Is that a mosque? Is that a mosque? I, I, I love the fact that mosques worldwide, they, there's such like a opulence to it. Like they all look so presentable in so many ways. They all look so lavish and I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I, I, I just did a video about Iran as well. Um, like I said, I'm half Persian. Um, and some of the mosques there are absolutely incredible. I mean, even here in America, some of them are just stunning, stunning, jaw-dropping. Love it. Kingdoms, the Portuguese come in quickly, but then the Dutch flock in. Japan comes in for a couple of years and decimates a huge chunk of the population. Yeah. Independence, Republic, the Suharto years. Controversial incidents and fights with ethnic Chinese, Timorese, and Papuan peoples. Suharto falls, Reformation period begins, and here we are today. In Indonesia, all citizens are required to register under one of six so fast. religion categories. Islam, Protestant, Catholic, Hindu. Wait, what do you say? They're re required to register. Required to register? Your religion? Wow. Under one of six recognized religion categories. Islam, Protestant, Catholic, Hindu, Buddhist, and Confucianism. You're required to register under one of those? What if you're not? 
What if you're not? Or what about tourists? I don't know. Let's find if out. If you don't identify with either, then sorry. Prior to Islam entering around the 13th century, Indonesia... What does that mean? What does that mean? Sorry. What if you don't identify with them? You just have to pick one? Let me know. If you know the answer, let me know. Comment down below, please. Indonesia was actually primarily Hindu and Buddhist. It's disputed on how exactly Indonesia became prevalently Muslim. Some people will say that it's because of the Arab traders that came by in the early first millennium. Others will say that maybe it had to do with the Malacca Sultanate conquest that fought against the Hindu and Buddhist kingdoms. And the truth is, both might be right. Inevitably, Bali became like the last sort of haven for whatever Hindus were left. The eastern Nusa Tenggara region and the Papuas remained predominantly Christian as the Dutch and Portuguese shared the gospel. Islamic culture in Indonesia is a little different from what it looks like in the Middle East. For one, most mosques don't have the typical dome structure, and actually many of them resemble Hindu temples, like the Damak Great Mosque. When a family mm. member dies, their relatives might often come together and pray for a whole week, and then again on the 40th day, and then on the year anniversary, and then on the 500th day, and so on. Wow. Also, the night before Eid al Fatir, the youth might gather and go around neighborhoods reciting the takbir. Those are some things you don't really typically find in the Middle East. Clothing modesty customs are pretty loose. Not all Muslim women wear hijabs, however, the ones that do might also. Do, might also complement it with Western clothing, like branded t-shirts with skin tight sleeves and jeans. <laughs> when I was in Indonesia, I saw a hijab wearing woman with short sleeves and capri pants exposing her calves. I was like, can they do that? Now in terms of culture, <laughs> again, it depends on where you are and many yeah. indigenous people still follow ancient traditions. Everything from the Minangkabau candle dance to the gamelan players of Yogyakarta. That looks so awesome, dude. What is it called? Yog uh, Yogyakarta gamelan instrument players? I gotta check that out. That looks sweet. Wayang Javanese shadow puppetry, Balinese festival. Woohoo! Look at these colors. Holy shit. Look at this. I love it. I love bright colors. I love it so much. Like blue and pink always look good together. Look at the little spatterings of pink everywhere. Oh man, I love it. Hell yeah. Sumatran Pencock Silat martial art tournaments, Kenya motif paintings of the Kalimantan tribes, the deadly Pasola game played Ooh. by Sumba peoples, Karabang cow racing on Madura Island. Look at his eyes. <laughs> Cow Razor. Look at this guy's eyes. It looks demonic. Wow. Island, the strange burial traditions of the Toraja people. Holy and everywhere shit. you can find those pointy wow. longhouses. Otherwise, some notable people of Indonesian descent might include people like the first president, Sukarno, Gadamaja, R.A. Kartini, B.J. Habibi, Iko Wais, Yaya Nuruhiyan, Sesep Arif Rahman, Agnes Monica, Iwan Faz, Angun, Megawati Sukarno Putri, the Hartono brothers, and YouTubers Brian Emanuel and Raditya D. Now it's so hard to cover Indonesia's culture because I knew about Brian Emanuel, Rich Brian. I knew about that. I knew I knew he was from Indonesia. There's so many different people groups. It's like the one thing that I've known since we started that in Jakarta. Jesus. Each with their own cultures. It's insanely colorful and rich. I wish we could cover more, but we gotta move on to some diplomatics, shall we? Okay, so Indonesia is basically like the kingpin of Southeast Asia with the largest population and economy as well as being a member of the G20. Therefore, they know how to manage okay. relations. First of all, the rest of the Muslim nations in the Middle East generally get along with Indonesia as they see them as kind of like their strange Asian cousins. Indonesians make up the largest group of pilgrims for the Hajj in Mecca. However, there has been some controversy with Saudi Arabia in regards to migrant worker abuse and death sentences. Since then, Indonesia dramatically decreased its expat programs. The US, the Netherlands, and- I have heard that as well. I have heard that as well. So this is what multiple over here in the bottom. It said this is what multiple Indonesian people have told me, but I have heard that as well. Um, even as an outsider. And Australia are kind of like their biggest non-Asian supporters. In addition to trade and business, the U.S. played a huge role in Indonesia's independence, and they worked closely during Cold War times. The Netherlands still holds close ties to Indonesia despite post-colonial bitterness. Plus, tons of Indonesians live in the Netherlands. To this day, they have the second largest population of Indonesians outside of Indonesia Ooh. after Malaysia at nearly 2 million. Interesting. Australia wow. has some of the most aid to Indonesia, especially after catastrophe incidents. And even though there are some controversies involving immigration and attacks on Australians abroad, they still share close ties generally. Now, Indonesia and Malaysia are kind of like the Colombia and Venezuela of Southeast Asia. They're like the twins separated at birth and have a strange love-hate relationship. Malays accuse Indonesians of stealing their culture and language. Indonesians accuse them of not being grateful for all their help during war times. But when they actually meet up as people, it's like they're totally brothers. Nonetheless, <laughs> most Indonesians I talk to have said Japan is probably their best friend. Which is funny because Japan kind of really messed things up during World War II. Nonetheless, they've moved on and today Japan makes up the largest export partner. 
tourists flock in year round, and the two have been building each other up for over half a century. In conclusion, Indonesia's people are very much like their islands, numerous with lush, colorful, strange diversity. Sometimes a cyclone, earthquake, or volcano of controversy erupts, but at the end of the day, they still flourish together as one. Stay nice. tuned, Iran is coming up next. Oh, crap. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't know that they filmed these like in this order. The last geography now that I checked out was Iran. And it looks like uh, Indonesia was right before that. And I did them in reverse order and just by chance. Interesting. Next. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Geography now. Geography now. Thumbs up. Round of applause. That was interesting. I, I just, I adore the fact that this exists. The fact that this is out there for me to explore and just you know at least dip my toes into the water of other cultures it's very satisfying you know i i've done so many songs i'm sorry so done so many videos about indonesian songs and it's just interesting to kind of see everything kind of on a very very high level kind of how everything is um kind of related how it all kind of ties in um definitely i, I mean i i still know the very very basics of the basics of the basics i mean you can't you can't take a, a country with that much history and boil it down into a 15 minute video um, and really like say, oh, I understand. Uh, but it's nice to kind of get to know um, the culture, the people, the country, um, just everything. It's very nice. I like it. Uh, let me know what y'all thought. Tell me what you thought. Uh, make sure you drop a comment down below. Um, and if you have any answers to the questions that I asked during the video, don't forget to drop those uh, down below as well. Um, and if you like the video, don't forget to say, uh, or for, don't forget, if okay, let's try that again. If you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Um, if you didn't like it, hit that thumbs down. And again, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. It would be much appreciated. Um, if you want to hit me up, uh, I've got Twitter and Instagram. It's at Johnny's Hater TV on both of those. Um, and Patreon. If we're done Patreon, thank you so much for all your support. From the bottom of my heart means the world to me. Uh, if you want to join Patreon, it's as little as $1 a month. and You get a bunch of good stuff with that. Um, but I think that's it for me. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. I love you. See you soon. Bye.